Troy Carter first made a name for himself as manager to both Lady Gaga and John Legend. Today, he is one of the biggest names in music. As Spotify's global head of creator services, he has been credited with preparing the company's relationship with artists. And through his own company, Adam Factory, he continues to work with star talent as well as investing and incubating technology. And... He will double down there in the years ahead. On his last day at Spotify, I sat down with Carter at the Inbound Conference in Boston to talk about his exit and the future of Adam Factory and the music business. Take a listen. You know what? Um, we had a great time. It's been two and a half years. Um, I'm an entrepreneur by heart, you know, just is in my blood. And I wanted to take on a challenge. And uh, I felt like the music industry was taking a shift. Um, Daniel just lives light years ahead of everybody else when it comes to you know seeing what the future looks like. So being able to spend some real time with him and real time and um, within the company, I think it did a lot for me in terms of understanding how um, companies scale. Um, being there to see the company go from you know startup to you know big privately held company to public company but also just for me i was excited about some of the more entrepreneurial opportunities that are you know the sort of white space that exists now as well and what do you think is going to happen in terms of um, how the pie will be divvied up whether it's spotify or apple music or youtube is the pie going to keep getting bigger is one of them going to rise to the top and dominate? Uh, you know, I think I think Daniel's been clear on, you know, it's, it's not going to be a winner-take-all market, you know, and just how the market is shaped. And, and a lot of it has to do with the different constituencies of consumers, you know, so you have consumers who are never going to pay for music, you know, whether it's they don't believe in paying for music or, and more, to, more of the point is a lot of consumers can't afford to pay for mm -hmm. music, so they're going to consume a certain type of way. And radio has always been an option there, you know. Um, and then you have people who are going to still buy CDs. You got people, you know, who are vinyl enthusiasts. So you have all of these different types of consumers. And then also you have voice. You know, so I think voice is going to develop a certain type of consumer. The car is going to have a certain type of consumer. You're going to have all different types. So I don't think it's winner take all by any means. So let's talk about Adam Factory and your investments. You've invested in Uber, you've invested in Dropbox. What's hot now? You know, we're, see we're seeing a, a new wave of companies that are, are really interesting. So as I'm looking at what does the future look like for, for, for investing from a consumer side is much different, you know, so where at one point, you know, when you look at Uber and Lyft, and the amount of market share that they were able to grab, you know, and how people weren't able to compete, um, you know, just as, as they grew so quickly, they raised a ton of money, they were able to scale really fast. And then you look at the scooter space and how fragmented is going to be and how regulated is going to be right away. And also you see a lot of the big players like Uber and Lyft are getting in it like right away. So, and you look at Facebook that, that they're either buying or building right, you know, right away. So they're not leaving a lot of room for new ideas to, to sort of emerge and grow at, at the scale of some of our previous investments have been able to grow. So I've been looking at opportunities and spaces that other investors other investors uh, haven't looked at and quite honestly may not understand. Like what? So when you look at so you know the the where the world's moving in terms of majority minority mm -hmm. specifically in America mm -hmm. and you look at you know whether it's Latino entrepreneurs or African American entrepreneurs or female entrepreneurs that are attacking problems that uh, typical VCs would never look at and your sort of uh, typical entrepreneurs would, would, wouldn't go after because they don't understand the cultural pain points. You know, so whether that's lending mm -hmm. and sort of the cultural issues around lending, whether it's the bias around lending, whether it's shame around lending, whether it's things that may go on a credit report for this person who may be a good uh, customer, but it may not look 
typical. So we're looking at different companies that understand those nuances, and we've invested in a couple companies. We're looking at um, a category that we call the unperfect parent, mm -hmm. and um, and an unperfect parent. It's you know how are how are you how are new parents looking at um, raising children versus previous generations, you know, where this is a generation that's on demand, a generation that um, grew up a lot different from their parents. So we're looking at entrepreneurs in that space as well. And then next week, you know, I'm in Africa for 10 days mm -hmm. meeting with, you know, entrepreneurs in Africa. So, you know, just looking at other, op other opportunities.